My friends, thank you for joining us today here on the radio slash television transmission. We're going to be going back to David Knight in the radio studio here in just a few minutes. But I wanted to spend some time breaking down what's transpired since UN Agenda 21 was globally ratified by the United Nations back in 1992 to be international law, whether nations want to adopt the law or not. As far as the UN sees it and the eugenicist globalists that control it, uh, they are going to enforce it by hook or by crook. In the past, people like Napoleon Bonaparte and Adolf Hitler in Europe tried to take over by force. But the corporatists uh, learned that what can't be done with force can be done by stealth. So I wanted to go back into the archives here in a few minutes and play some clips here for the radio and TV audience today. Uh, excerpts from my 1997 film that I produced with my cousin who's been working here off and on since, uh, Buckley Hammond, who, 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 who ran camera with me. And, and I just mentioned that fact because he's recently come back to work with us after being gone for about 11 years. We're very excited uh, to have him here. But when I shot and directed and produced this film uh, back in 1997, uh, almost no one was aware of Agenda 21. Almost no one was aware of Cloward and Piven. And the plan to bring in neo-feudalism in the UN's own words. And we cover that in the film Endgame with Dr. Michael Kaufman, whose maps in Congress off the UN documents showed half the country off limits to human activity completely. Then the rest of it only under partial human use and again, that's down to the mile, land controlled uh, by the establishment. So it's a form of artificial scarcity, not just here in the U.S., but worldwide, to shut down your competition in business, real estate, industry, where only you are allowed to operate and, and, and uh, no one else is. A form of corporate or diplomatic immunity from taxes, regulations, you name it. And I know I hammer this almost every week It's because it's so key. It's how the world really works. And the globalists are quite public about that. But I wanted to just look at a quick web search under environmental tyranny and Agenda 21 uh, that Rob Dew did today and just go over some of the recent history uh, of what's been unfolding. First off, I want to look at the New York Times. Uh, they are pretty much the establishment talking point propaganda center for the rest of the dinosaur media. And uh, for the last few years, this was in 2012, uh, they have been uh, running around saying that there is no Agenda 21, there is no move to control human activity, there is no move to use zoning uh, as a form of feudalism to bring in a new dark age of control, even though that's in the Biological Diversity Assessment 1996 and part of Agenda 21 to uh, 1992. But, but here it is. Activists fight green projects seeing UN plot. And they're like, oh, it's so terrible. These projects we have to basically federalize every town in the country uh, by getting cities to adopt these regulations to circumvent the states and go under UN treaty. Oh my gosh, it's insane. It doesn't exist. None of it is happening. So I thought I would just show you here, if you're a TV viewer or direct view of your radio listener, to even Wikipedia. Everybody knows Wikipedia is not totally accurate when it gets vandalized, but usually it's very accurate. You can go to the bibliography uh, on Agenda 21, on Wikipedia, and you can see the bibliography uh, to all the government documents and the official UN website uh, where it's on record. And uh, this is the so-called Voluntary Implemented Action Plan of the United Nations. But that's not really true because through adjoining treaties, uh, in UNESCO, it is brought in to law. But the point is, it does exist despite what the New York Times says. And it shows that the New York Times has lost a lot of power because famously they did a review of the film New World Order that came out about a year after Bilderberg 2008 where Obama and Hillary were meeting in secret. We got video of this. They said that I was there imagining they were meeting, having a full-on hallucination at the Marriott in Chantilly, Virginia. Even though now it's totally admitted to have happened, 
Remember, the New York Times said none of that even went on. Pay no attention uh, to the man behind the curtain. Move along, move along. These aren't the droids uh, you're, you're looking for. But again, the good news is people are seeing the manifestation of Agenda 21. So, I don't know, 14, 15, 16, 17 years after I produced my first film, I thought that we would just go over some more of the things it's doing. Uh, let's look at this article right here, CBS News. Bloomberg announces winner of micro-apartment design competition. And you've got these big real estate owners like Bloomberg and others. It's happening in San Francisco and Austin, Texas, not just New York, where, oh, you pay double or triple per square foot what you would have paid for a 2,000-square-foot apartment or a 1,000-square-foot apartment, or you got a big family, a 3,000-foot you know, condo, you now pay effectively, ladies and gentlemen, double or even triple for a 250-square-foot, and now they're making them smaller. They're building one in Austin that will house over 5,000 people where it's 200 square feet, despite all the studies showing it's like elephants in tiny cages, not good for you. So this is all in Agenda 21 to have higher taxes and to take more of your money and then to get you to accept less as if it's cool. And I get the consumerism can be out of control, but these are elites who want red carpets and, 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 and Air Force One and 15 houses and five wives and six kids like Ted Turner, but you're not supposed to have air conditioning uh, or ever be able to have a car as Obama famously told Africans earlier this year. In fact, we'll play that clip now. Ultimately, if you think about all the youth that everybody's mentioned here in Africa, if everybody's raising living standards to the point where everybody's got a car and everybody's got air conditioning and everybody's got a big house, uh, well, the planet will boil over. All right, uh, so Bloomberg announces winner of micro apartments design competition. This is just a few years ago. Now it's going on everywhere. And, and this is how they sell it as the newest coolest thing. Hey, pay double or triple and live in a coffin house. For rent, your very own Agenda 21 shoebox apartment. Again, this is being uh, reported across the board. Here's another headline. Micro apartments could be hazardous to your mental health. And then it breaks down uh, the studies showing that it's not good for you to basically live in a jail cell uh, so the elites uh, can control and run your life. Here's another one. Living in a box, the desperate workers forced to live in a tiny coffin apartments of Tokyo, which still costs up to 400 pounds a month or about $700. Again, it's about charging you to live in a coffin style house more. It's not about cutting back on, on, on spoilage or living large. It's about poor people learning to live even more poor. Uh, and there's uh, more breakdowns here in Austin uh, with the development uh, where they are setting up short-term rentals controlled in a complex that the city is going to run and basically own. Uh, just very scary to have government like the Communist Chinese getting into the business uh, of these coffin-like facilities. Uh, moving right along, here's another example of what Agenda 21 means. Western land takeover, former BLM chief, State lawmakers clash as millions of acres are taken out of use. Case in point, the Bundy Ranch, where you had 35 families, now only one, because they use the regulations and fees to raise it to bankrupt you. Like Obama said, you can build a coal power plant, but we're going to raise the taxes to bankrupt you. You can have ranches, but we're just going to raise the prices till it bankrupts you, and we wonder why beef prices have doubled. Uh, so continuing here... Here's another article along that line. BLM eyes 90,000 acres of Texas land. They only you know, have half the West and hundreds of millions of acres. Now they want even more of ranchers' land that they have the title to. Sticker shock is steakhouse uh, beef prices, highest in 27 years. Uh, so th these are just examples of what living under this system uh, is like. Now, in conclusion, before we go to these clips from my first film, America Destroyed by Design, uh, let's go to some more of these articles. Here's Fortune. Agenda 21, global conspiracy or climate savior? And they kind of, you know, make a joke out of it because, again, all the different establishment publications don't want us mobilizing against 
this corporate stealth takeover of society uh, that, that's in all the documents in public. So again, here's that move under Agenda 21 to abolish the suburbs. Uh, Obama, will he abolish them? Agenda 21 conspiracy to wipe out freedoms of all U.S. citizens. And it gets into the idea of urban sprawl being horrible. The problem is we're already laid out to live like that. We don't want to go into the central cities where everything costs so much. This will only hurt the poorest people that much more. This is the model of social engineering. Here's another headline. Gen 21, GOP candidate uh, vows to stop UN plan. It's very popular to expose this and to run on a prosperity ticket. That's why the system doesn't want us talking about it. Here's another one. Esquire uh, saying that uh, it's a con game uh, to try to say that this program is even going on. Remember how they would try to deny the, that the UN even basically was trying to set up a world government? Or they try to say there was no NSA spying or there were no lies about WMDs in Iraq? I mean, the people know that, no, this is going on. And denying that it exists doesn't work anymore. In fact, under Agenda 21, they've tried to ban all over the world children learning how to be farmers under their parents and doing their chores. Here's a headline. EPA moles tougher dust standards. Agency moles particulate matter standards that would shut down every hay barn in the country. That's out of the Courier Press. Here's another one. Arizona loses to EPA on farm dust. They're moving ahead to shut it down. Okay, can't have dust. Obama team wants children banned from doing farm chores. You see, this is what's going on under the Department of Labor. Saying that your children can't even carry out the trash or get the eggs out of the chicken coop. This is the total control. This is why they're banning lemonade stands. And Forbes magazine has to ask, why is there a war on lemonade stands all over the United States? It's why they're banning farmers markets and Amish selling milk and why they're raiding organic food stores that aren't Whole Foods and are mom and pops. Because they want you in their system. They want you at Walmart. They want you at Target. They want you only buying their tainted, GMO, additive-ridden, social engineering garbage. And my friends, again, you've got to see the original film, America Destroyed by Design, because we have two hours there to break this down. I'm only scratching the surface. You've got every waterway in the country being taken over where they're now announcing that areas in San Marcos may not be able to be used uh, in rivers because there's natural rice or heirloom wild rice growing. And, oh, you won't be able to use the Mississippi uh, because it's a UN biosphere zone. The feds and the globalists are announcing ownership of everything. And then part of UNESCO and these uh, agendas uh, that, it, that even go past Agenda 21, but other treaties are that the kids, the best and brightest, will be taken to model UN Agenda 21 and indoctrinated at major universities before they're even graduated from high school in to be UN subdelegates and put into the UN system. But this takeover is full spectrum at every level. And that's why real liberals, real conservatives, real pro-people, pro-prosperity humans need to be aware of what's going on and to absolutely say no to this agenda because it is a eugenics, anti-human, neo-feudalistic, fascist program that is on record. And only your ignorance, only my ignorance and, and my inaction and your inaction can allow this to continue. Let's go to a few excerpts of where I tried to warn people at the Grand Canyon uh, and more, and where we show the actual documents and warn of the UN treaties back in 1997. And then we'll come back on the other side in the radio studio to get David Knight's take on this. Stay with us. We're here at the model United Nations Day, January 16th, 1998. We went in and discussed with a lot of people, a lot of issues, and saw the youth being educated, being trained in the ways of world governance and the growth of the world government control apparatus. And I see y'all are wearing little worlds there. Do y'all care about the world? Yeah. Y'all are good people, aren't you? Uh -huh. Yeah. Do y'all think the United Nations is helping? Mm-hmm. I think it's a great, great way to like make world peace. A great way to make world peace. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because through global governance, we can knock out all the, all the troublemakers. Yes. Is that what y'all been talking about? Yeah, I sort of. Yeah. Well, that's great. I hope y'all have an enjoyable time. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. What do you think about the United Nations? It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, it's very good. It's like an organization. It's 
I think it's kind of fun. It is really fun. cool. It decides a whole lot of world issues. Yeah. They make peace. Yeah. Real peace and stuff. It's very it's really exciting. Nifty. <laughs> <laughs> Model United Nations just won more than many committees. Helpless young people yielding themselves to the elite's hands. I could tell them about the people that really control it, but they never understand it. It's this petty taste of power that gets them to believe that they're really doing something good when they're really working for something bad. I'm standing here in northern Arizona overlooking the beautiful Grand Canyon, one of America's most beautiful treasures. And it's very distressing to me and other patriots and people that truly do care about the environment in America that Bill Clinton, with his executive order, January 19, 1996, number 12,986, began the precedent to sign over our national treasures to international control. Yes, this is a international biosphere and world heritage site. And guess who controls those? The United Nations. The United Nations is nothing more than a front group for international banks based in Europe and in America. They care nothing about the environment. They care about using it as an excuse to tell you how you can use the environment, to get you used to listening to what they say and what you can do and what you can use. I'm sure you all have all heard they're planning to restrict cars to the Grand Canyon and bring buses in quite soon. Well, I'm here during peak season at the end of the summer, and I don't see any problem with Americans coming to the Grand Canyon. They're paying exorbitant prices of $20 a car. Wake up and understand that large corporations think in a long-term game. They understand that if they can restrict use to this place and get international control in here, then 10, 20 years down the road, they can start construction and building, which they're already doing, by the way. So we are for real conservation, but we are against organized crime cliques that call themselves international bankers and elite corporations coming in and buying off your politicians like Bill Clinton, who is an incredible traitor to this country, who then signs over promptly our rights to use and to maintain our natural wonders. There's a lot of money in controlling these places. A lot of people come and visit them. Just cut through their lies, and it's sterling simple exactly what's happening. Now let's go talk to some park rangers and other individuals, perhaps some of the tourists here, and see if they've even heard of this terrible crime that's being committed against the American people, this giant land grab. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm conducting a scientific experiment. I want to ask y'all if y'all know about executive order signed January 19th, 1996 by President Bill Clinton, number 12,986, which designated this as a World Heritage Site under UNESCO, a corporation of the United Nations. None of you heard about this in the mainstream media. None of you heard about it. Nobody's heard about this, have you? Well, they had... they. They, they took down the signs in most parks because there was a furor about three days after they put up the United Nations signs. No one's heard about it, huh? Well, see, that's how fascism breeds. The environmentalist movement is now nothing but an arm of corrupt international banks and corporations. They're using it as an excuse for land grabs all over the entire world. Remember this, and check it out. Executive order. Call the Interior Department. Call Bruce Babbitt. Executive Order 12,986. It's important. The modern bureaus of propaganda keep this from you. No sooner had I turned away that some of the crowd began to laugh and call me a kook. I guess they won't take the time to check out the Executive Order 12,986. I guess they don't believe it unless they hear it from Peter Jennings' mouth. At the Grand Canyon Main Visitor Center, we talked to some of the people at the front desk, and they politely said, yes, we've heard about the U.N., but we're not quite sure what's going on. There was some rigmarole, some protest about the U.N. signs, so they have been moved in some of the national parks. And then later, we got a little visit from the head honchos who were quite rude. Unfortunately, they wouldn't let us take our cameras behind closed doors where I was threatened with arrest. Is there anybody that I can, who will just tell me the same thing you did, but just where I can have a mic on and things? Well, we have a public affairs officer right here. Well, you heard me just ask him to just politely talk to a public affairs officer. We were sitting down for about 10 minutes with our cameras off, 
and barely got a shot of her. That's why we had to freeze it. We only got about a half a second of her. She was very rude and drug me to the back and threatened to arrest me for dare to ask questions. Was I some type of terrorist? And you should have seen the monster they had in the back with us. This is all part of America. It's flat out corruption. You own and control these public lands. Not the federal government and not their international lackey friends controlled by foreign corrupt banks. End of story. We've now reached the north entrance of Yellowstone National Park here in Montana. And let's just read what the important inscription at the front of this old gate reads. For the benefit and the enjoyment of the people, created by an act of Congress, March 1st, 1872. We dropped by the main visitor center and they sent us over to the main administration building. We simply wanted to ask what's going on with the United Nations and our parks. Hey, how you doing? Fine, how are you? Oh, I saw someone look just like you. Uh, we're going all over the country doing an independent film, and we're just, we've already talked to Bruce Babbitt's office, and we were just wanted to ask questions about the, the uh, biosphere designation. I'll have to, you're filming? Do you have a filming permit? Oh, there's a permit? Yes. I'm here making my own documentary. Could you turn off your camera? I just want to reiterate the fact that everyone was very polite at most of the parks, but once you would get to a park and get to the main upper level areas, they were all very rude. They would tell you to turn the camera off. We would. Then they took us to the back and, again, threatened us uh, with fines for having a camera in the park. And I said, well, I see cameras everywhere. And they said, well, you're a professional, aren't you? And I said, well, not really. I guess I am. And then uh, what kind of weirdos are you? Got me back in the office, called more of them back there. I got threatened to be arrested at two places, and you just saw how polite I was. And then they thought that I had a bug hidden on me or something and wouldn't even hardly talk to me back there. They'd all been advised about dangerous people asking questions. They acted like a military encampment. It was very, very strange. Someone had prepared them. Despite the administration not being very helpful, we did locate the UN signs, both the International Biosphere and the World Heritage Site. Y'all are the owners. I mean, we bought into this whole federal government type deal, and now they're telling us that we can't even use what we supposedly own? Well, <laughs> I don't know, I'd rather... Yeah. Turns this over to the United Nations and they got a plaque down at the main central office. It'd probably be easier just not to think about it. How come they didn't stare you in the conspiracy theory? <laughs> it's not a conspiracy theory. There's a bronze plaque right up there, ma'am. You see that right there? They talk about a Hollywood movie rather than the bronze plaque in the executive order. That is what's wrong with America, ladies and gentlemen. People have been taught, bred from a foot tall, absolutely not to care, while they're being raided by the government, which is controlled by corrupt corporations. And when I say that, I mean the top 20. What people think is rich is a joke in this country. They think a nice house and a nice car is wealthy. And that's why it's so easy for the establishment to manipulate people. You notice the well-informed people would talk to us and, and knew of the executive orders, only a, only a few. And they're probably the people who've actually done well economically because they were able to sift through the lies. But the rest of America seems to love being conned. It's, it's like they get into being lied to and they get an incredible thrill out of the whole thing. That is painful to me. That's why I'll continue to make these documentaries. I will continue to rant and rave on the radio about factual information. And if people don't have the, the, the inner strength to rise up to a threat, foreign or domestic, and stand up for U.S. sovereignty, then I feel really, really sorry for them because that's where we are in America today. We are under siege. We're losing our property rights as we speak. The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding and making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize 
realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the Info War to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv.